Welcome to Sato Cario 2.0 online nursing channel. This is challenge test for AIMS nursing officer exam Rishikesh 2019. In this video we are going to discuss 40 questions. Also I am going to give you the rational for these questions but not in verbally. Instead of that I am going to give all the rational for the answers of those 40 questions in the description box. If you need the rational I will give you the PDF file. Uh, you can join our WhatsApp group so that these uh, rationals I will put in our WhatsApp groups. You can refer for your studies in future also. Before going to see these questions, please subscribe to Sato Carrier 2.0 online nursing channel. To get notification, please click the bell icon. Come, let's go for the first question of the day. A child aged 2 years have a congenital right to left shunt defect of the heart. The nurse would expect to observe option A orthopenia, B an elevated hematocrit, C absence of pedal pulses, D edema in the extremities. The right answer an elevated hematocrit levels. Question number 2. While performing cardiac compression on an adult client, it is essential to exert vertical downward pressure which depresses the lower sternum at least by option A 1.3 to 2 cm that is half to 3 fourth inch, option B 2 to 2.5 cm which is 3 by 4 to 1 inch. Option C, 2.5 to 4 cm, that is 1 to 1.5 inches. Option D, 4 to 5 cm, that is 1.5 to 2 inches. The right answer is option D, 4 to 5 cm, which is 1.5 to 2 inches. You need to give vertical downward pressure, which depresses the lowest sternum. When you give cardiac compression for an adult client, Question number 3. The cardiac defects associated with tetralogy of phallet include Option A. Right ventricular hypertrophy B. Atrial and ventricular defects uh, Sorry. Option A is right ventricular hypertrophy, atrial and ventricular defects and mitral wall stenosis. Option B. Right ventricular hypertrophy, ventricular septal defect, stenosis of pulmonary artery and overriding of iota. Option C, abnormal connection between the pulmonary artery and the iota, right hypertrophy, right ventricular hypertrophy and the atrial septal defects. Option D, none of this. Yes, the right answer. The right answer will be option B, right ventricular hypertrophy, ventricular septal defect, stenosis of pulmonary artery and overriding iota. These four defects are associated with tetralogy of phallet. Question number 4. Pacemaker is used to some clients to serve the functions that is normally performed by the option A, AV node, B, SA node, C, bundle of his, D, Purkinje fibers. The right answer is option B, SA node. Question number 5. Vasodilator has been administered to a client to lower the hypertension. The effectiveness of the drug is assessed by taking the client's pulse and blood pressure. Option A. Prior to administering the drug. B. 30 minutes after giving the drugs. C. Immediately after the client gets out of bed. Option D. After the client has been supine for 5 minutes. Yes, the right answer. When you will give vasodilator now the the effectiveness how you will assess the right answer is immediately after client get out of bed you can check the client's pulse and bp to get the effectiveness of vasodilator drug question number six a client is admitted with atrial fibrillation and a rapid ventricular response the nurse prepares for cardioversion. 
to avoid a potential danger of inducing vent ventricular fibrillation during cardioversion, the nurse should ensure that the option A energy level is set at its maximum level. Option B synchro synchronizer switches in the on position. Option C skin electrodes are applied after the T wave. Option D alarm system of the cardiac monitor is functioning simultaneously. Now which is the right answer for this question? The right answer is option B synchronizer switches in the on position. Question number 7. The nurse is obtaining data from a client with thromboangitis obliterans that is called Burgers disease. The nurse would expect the client to demonstrate or report. Option A. Easy fatigue of extremities. Continuous claudication. Option B. General blanching of skin. C. Intermittent claudication. Burning pain after exposure to cold. Option D. Burning pain precipitated by cold exposure, fatigue and blanching skin. The right answer is option C. Intermittent claudication, burning pain after exposure to cold. Question number 8. A client in the outpatient clinic tells the nurse that he has leg pain that begin when he walks but relieved when he stops walking. The nurse assesses the client for which of the following condition. Option A. An acute obstruction in the vessels of the legs. Option B. Peripheral vascular problems with in both the legs. Option C. Diabetes. And D. Calcium deficiency. The right answer for this is Option B. Peripheral vascular problems in both legs. Question number 9. One of the most common complications of myocardial infraction is Option A. Hypokalemia B. Anaphylactic shock C. Cardiac dysarrhythmias and D. Calcium deficiency Again, I am telling the question, one of the most common complications of myocardial infraction is. The right answer is, cardiac dysarrhythmias is the one of the common complications of myocardial infraction. Question number 10. The most informative measurement for determining cardiogenic shock is. Option A. Arterial blood pressure. Option B. Central venous pressure. C. Pulmonary artery pressure and D. S. Cardiac index which is the right answer. The correct answer is arterial blood pressure. Again I am telling you the rational for all these answers are given in the description box. You can check it. Otherwise if you want the rational in PDF file you can join our WhatsApp group. I will give you the PDF in WhatsApp. Question number 11. A client wants to know what the coronary arteries have to do with anginal pain. When answer the client, the nurse should take into consideration that the coronary arteries, option A, supply blood to the endocardium, option B, carry blood from the iota to the myocardium, option C, carry reduce oxygen content blood to the lungs option d carry high oxygen content blood from the lung towards the heart which is the correct answer about coronary arteries the right explanation given by the nurse will be it carries blood from the iota to the myocardium question number 12 a client is receiving anticoagulant. The nursing care should include observations for 
Option A, nausea. Option B, epistaxis. C, headache. D, chest pain. The right answer is option B, epistaxis. Question number 13. In clients with congestive heart failure, the associate dyspnea is primarily due to option A, blockage of pulmonary artery by an embolus. Option B, accumulation of fluid in the interstitial spaces and alveoli of the lungs. Option C, blockage of bronchi by mucus secretions. And D is compression of lungs by the dilated heart. The correct answer for question number 13 will be option B. Accumulation of fluid in the interstitial spaces and alveoli of the lungs. Now we move on to question number 14. A client has been admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of suspected bacterial endocarditis. The nurse should constantly monitor for which of the following complications. Option A, presence of a hot murmur. Option B, systemic emboli. C, fever. D, congestive heart failure. So bacterial endocarditis, which is the common complication which a nurse should monitor. The right answer is systemic emboli is the potential complication. Question number 15. A client states his anginal pain increases on activity. The angina pectoris is a sign of option A, myocardial ischemia, B, myocardial infraction, option C, coronary thrombosis and D, all the above. The angina pectoris is a sign of option A, myocardial ischemia. Question number 16. Prolonged bed rest after surgery promotes hemostasis, particularly in the deep vein of the coughs. The most likely patho pathologic result of such hemostasis may be thrombus formation and option A, cerebral embolism, B, coronary occlusion, C, pulmonary embolism, D. Dry gangrene of a limb. The right answer. The most likely pathologic result of such hemostasis along with thrombus formation, there will be embolism in the pulmonary, pulmonary embolism. Question number 17. The nurse suspects that a client is in cardiogenic shock. This type of shock is option A on irreversible phenomenon. Option B, a failure of peripheral circulation. Option C, usually a fleeting reaction to tissue injury. Option D, generally caused by decreased blood volume. So, which is the correct answer about cardiogenic shock? This type of shock is. Option B, a failure of peripheral circulation is the right answer. Question number 18. A nurse is taking the vital signs of a young child who has coactation of the iota. The nurse can expect to observe option A, notching of the clavicle, B, bounding femoral pulse, C, weak thready radial pulses, D, higher BP in upper extremities. Which is the correct answer? The right answer is option D. Higher BP in upper extremities can be expected by a nurse who is taking a vital sign for a child with coactation of iota. Question number 19. A client is admitted to the hospital and has edematous ankles. The best way to limit the ankle edema is by Option A, restricting fluids. B, elevating the legs. C, applying elastic bandages. D, inhibiting range of motion exercises. The right answer is, elevating the legs is the 
best way to limit the ankle edema? Question number 20. Postural changes immediately following spinal anesthesia may result in hypotension because there is option A dilation of blood vessels, B decreased response of baroreceptors, C decreased strength of cardiac contraction, option D interruption of cardiac accelerator pathways. The right answer is option A dilatation of blood vessels after spinal anesthesia can result in hypotension. Question number 21. The pain associated with a coronary occlusion is caused primarily by option A arterial spasm, B ischemia of the heart muscles, C blocking of the coronary veins, D irritation of nerve endings in the cardiac plexus. The right answer is option B ischemia of the heart muscles leads to pain which is result of cardiac coronary occlusion. Question number 22. A client is instructed to use elastic stockings. The nurse should teach the client that the stocking should be option A alternatively kept on 2 hours and off 2 hours. Option B worn only at night when activity is lessened. Option C put on before getting out of bed in the morning. Option D left in place until the physician advises otherwise. Which is the right answer? The right answer is option C put on before getting out of bed in the morning. Question number 23. The nurse is preparing a client for insertion of pulmonary artery catheter. That is Swan Gans catheter. The nurse teaches the client that the catheter will be inserted to provide information about option A stroke volume, B cardiac output, C venous pressure and D is left ventricular heart failure which is the correct answer. The right answer is about left ventricular heart failure. We get information when we insert pulmonary artery catheter also called a swan guns catheter. Question number 24. A client with myocardial infraction is in the coronary unit on a cardiac monitor. The nurse observes ventricular irritability on the screen. The nurse should prepare to administer option A, digoxin, B, fruzimide, C, lidocaine, and D is lavatanol betartrate. The right answer is the nurse who notes uh, the ventricular irritability should administer lidocaine. That is also called xylocaine. Question number 25. A client who is convulsing from abdominal surgery develops thrombophlebitis. The sign that would indicate this complication is Option A. Intermittent claudication B. Pitting edema of the lower extremities C. Severe pain on extension of an extremity Option D. Localized warmth and tenderness of the leg. The right answer is option D. Localized warmth and tenderness of the leg. This sign would indicate the complication of thrombophlebitis. Question number 26. A client physician orders an appointment for thallium scan. The purpose of injecting a radioisotope into the bloodstream is to option A normal versus abnormal tissue option B damage in areas of the heart option C ventricular function and D 
myocardial scarring and perfusion. The purpose of injecting radioisotope is to detect option D, myocardial scarring and perfusion. Question number 27. Thrombolytic therapy would be appropriate in which of the following conditions? Option A. Continuous blood pressure above 200. Option B. History of diabetic retinopathy. C. History of significant kidney disease. And D. Is myocardial infraction. Thrombolytic therapy would be appropriate in myocardial infraction to dissolve the clot. Question number 28. A client is diagnosed to have left ventricular failure and is high and a high pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. The physician orders dopamine to improve ventricular function. Which of the following indicates that the drug is effective? Option A. Blood pressure rises. Option B. Blood pressure decreases. C. Cardiac index falls. And A. Yes, the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure rises. So, the right answer is option A. BP rises when you administer dopamine. Question number 29. Which is the last sign of heart failure in infant and children? Option A. Orthopenia. B. Tachypenia. C. Tachycardia. And D. Peripheral edema. The last sign of heart failure in infant and children will be peripheral edema. Question number 30. A client develops a temperature of 102 degree Fahrenheit which is 38.8 degree Celsius following an open heart surgery. The nurse notifies the physician because elevated temperature indicates option A an increase in the cardiac output option B cerebral edema option C a forerunner of hemorrhage option D possible diaphoresis and chilling which is the right answer the correct answer is option A it in indicates an increase in the cardiac output question number 31 during a newborn assessment the nurse counts the infant's cord vessels in a normal infant there are option A two vessels that is one vein and one artery option B three vessels two veins and one arteries option C three vessels that is one vein and two arteries and option D is four vessels two veins and two arteries the right answer is option C three vessels one vein and two arteries will be present in the infant's cord vessels question number 32 while a pacemaker catheter is being inserted the client's heart rate drops to 38 the drug the physician would order is option a atropine sulfate option b digoxin option c lidocaine d procainamide which drug is given by the physician when inserting pacemaker catheter the right answer is atropine sulfate is given to improve the heart rate which falls down to 38 when a pacemaker catheter is being inserted 33 a client has edema during the day which disappears at night the client states it is not painful and is located in the lower extremities this is indicative of option a lung disease b pulmonary edema c myocardial infraction d is right ventricular heart failure the correct answer this is the indicative of option d right ventricular heart failure question number 34 in which of the following condition that a pulmonary embolism is a 
most unlikely complication during post operative period <coughs> sorry unlikely complication during the post operative period option a hysterectomy b prostatectomy c appendectomy and d is saphenous vein ligation <coughs> Sorry, the right answer will be appendectomy, option C. Question number 35. A client is receiving decumarol, that is a comarin derivative. The most specific test for calculating the daily dosage of this anticoagulant would be option A, clotting time, B, bleeding time, C, prothrombin time, and D is sedimentation rate. The right answer is prothrombin time should be estimated daily to calculate the dosage of decumarol. It is an anticoagulant. Question number 36. Orthostatic hypotension can be modified by option A. Wearing support hose continuously. Option B. Lying down for 30 minutes after taking medication. Sorry, lying down for 30 minutes after taking medication. Option C, avoiding tasks that require high energy expenditure. Option D, sitting on the edge of the bed a short time before arising. So, which can reduce the symptoms of orthostatic hypotension? The correct answer is option D, sitting on the edge of the bed a short time before arising. Question number 37. The children with cardiac problems who are awaiting corrective surgery are placed on long-term antibiotic prophylaxis. This is done to prevent option A, myocarditis, B, pericarditis, C, upper respiratory infection, D, subacute bacterial endocarditis. The correct answer for this question is option D. Subacute bacterial endocarditis. Question number 38. The portion of the cardiac monitor that is related to the alarm system for detecting extremities in the heart rate is called the option A. Voltmeter, B. Pacemaker, C. Oscilloscope and D. S. Synchronizer. The right answer is option A, voltmeter. Question number 39. The central venous pressure CVP reading should be recorded every two hours. The nurse is aware that option A, the normal reading is 60 to 120 millimeter of water. Option B, a high reading may be an indicative of dehydration. Option C, the zero point of the manometer is level with the mid axilla. Option D, the client must be kept flat in bed while the catheter is in place. The right answer is option C, the zero point of the manometer is level with the mid axilla. Question number 40, the physiological adaptation in a client with adam stroke syndrome would most likely include option a nausea and vertigo b flushing and slur speech c is cephalagia and blurred vision option d syncope and ventricular rate the right answer is syncope and ventricular rate so here uh, I am completing this video now. Please take the rational from the description box. Uh, if you want the rational PDF, you can ask me through WhatsApp also. Thanks for watching this video. Don't like to forget this. Uh, like, don't forget to like this video. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Soon meet you with another good questions.